Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Today I'm going to show you how to split a white worm culture. I often talk about the unique obstacles of feeding these teeny tiny fish and white worms are one of my favorite, especially for conditioning wild fish and making sure that they're fat and healthy when I transition them to dry foods. So I bought my culture years ago at a club auction, but um, I think you can order them online, I might have to look. But basically it's really simple. You have some plain organic, essentially dirt, a plastic container, ice cream tubs work really well. I tend to use these uh, Tupperware containers just because they're cheap and I have them. You want a glass square or an old CD case or some sort of flat piece of glass or plastic a spoon, and some extra water for humidity. So all we do first is fill up our container about halfway full with the dirt, being sure to sprinkle liberally on the floor, or at least I do. Uh, I prefer white worms to micro worms just because I uh, tend to forget about microworm cultures, and if any of you have kept them, you'll know that if you do that, it smells like rotten death, um, and then you discover this disgusting, hard culture that, I, I mean, it's, it's the worst smell ever. So after doing that many times from traveling and forgetting about them, I decided to switch to white worms because they have very little odor. The worms are good for a wide range of species from tiny to mid-sized. The worms get about an inch and a quarter at the biggest size. They're easy to feed and inexpensive to culture. All right, so what I did here is I filled with about half full. And you want the soil moist, but not totally wet. So if, if I were to be if I were to pick up a handful and squeeze it, I could probably get a few drops out of it but it wouldn't be dripping. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make with um, their white worm cultures is not keeping the soil mo moist enough. You don't want it to be mud, but you definitely do not want it to be dry. I'm just breaking up any lumps and uh, spreading the, the moisture around through the culture as thoroughly as possible. You wanna keep a spoon in your fish room for your culture. As if the soil starts to compact, you want to be able to sort of aerate it and loosen it up a little bit. All right, so there we have our dirt. I'm done with you. Here's one of my existing cultures. You can see that there are worms visible in the middle and also really climbing up the sides here. And that's how I can tell that it needs to be split. And all I do for that is to take a few spoonfuls of the worms, generally from the sides, and add them to the new culture. Now I'm going to take my lid, and I have already started, but I just poke little holes all around the edge so that there can be some air circulation in there so that when you feed the culture, it doesn't mold. If it molds, you can just scoop the mold off. Then I take a pinch of flake, just a little pinch. I, I like to use flake food because I would actually feed it to my fish. A lot of places suggest using cat food or tra trout chow, but I won't feed that to my fish, so I'm not going to feed it to the worms that I'm feeding my fish. So I just put a small amount on there because I only moved a couple spoonfuls of worms. Push that on there, press it down, and the purpose of that is the food adheres to the glass, and then when you lift the glass off, the worms are stuck to that, and it makes it easier to feed them put my lid on and then I place it somewhere cool and dark. Now I check it about every week to make sure the worms are fed, that it's not molding. Um, another thing is that these should be kept pretty cool so I tend to keep them on the floor in my fish room because it's warm in here but you could easily you know keep them in a basement somewhere cool and dark. If they get too warm they tend to die and again they don't get a particular odor but it defeats the purpose and then you don't have them to feed. And I have to reset a culture every several months. Generally, I keep two or three going at a time, various sizes. It takes about a month for the worm culture to really explode until you can feed 
tanks like I do. And it's just that easy. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Facebook page as well as my website, MsJinx.com. You can see where I'm speaking next, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Make sure you subscribe as well to catch my Tuesday tips and species spotlights.